Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with viewers game number 108. Every Sunday we analyze a game from a viewer of the Chess to Impress YouTube channel and we also make a new move in the game Rick against the Chess to Impress viewers. But before we get into that, we need to look at the last moves of the 2019 World Cup, which is part of the 2020 World Championship cycle. In March 2020 the candidates tournament will be held. Eight players will do battle and a winner will earn the right to challenge world champion Magnus Carlsen for the title at the end of 2020. Fabiano Carrana has qualified being the loser of the 2018 world championship match. The top two finishers of the FIDE Grand Prix will also qualify. That cycle is still in progress. But we know now who the two finalists are of the Chess World Cup 2019. Ding Liren from China and Timur Rajabov from Azerbaijan. The top finisher of the FIDE Grand Swiss Tournament 2019 will also qualify, as well as one player by rating and one wild card selected by the organizer. The World Cup is a grueling event, starting with 128 players and after almost a month, two were left standing, Ding Liren and Timur Rajabov. Having made the final meant that they already qualified for the candidates tournament, but they still were fighting for winning the Chess World Cup 2019. The final was played over four classical games, Ding struck first, Rajapov struck back and after four games the score was 2-0. Two, two rapid games were played which ended in a draw, two rapid games with a shorter time control were played which ended in a draw and then the players went to the blitz games. Five minutes per player for the whole game plus a three second increment per move. In the first blitz game Ding Liren had the white pieces and Timur Rajabov had the black pieces. So this was the ninth game of the final. This is the position after the 54th move Bishop E8 to B5 from Ding Liren. Materials equal but black is better. In fact black is winning. White's king is too far away from the action. Black's king is a lot closer and he's going to win the 8th three pawn. Let's see what happens. G5 from Rajabov. The king has to hurry back to the king side. King e5 and then king f4. The white king keeps running back but he won't make it on time. Knight e4 check. King e1. Now the king is almost back to where he needs to be. But king g3 and the h3 pawn is hanging. Bishop d7 protecting that pawn. White is hanging on for dear life. h4. Nice move from Rajabov. E3, what else is there? Knight F2 and now the pawn cannot be saved anymore. It's attacked twice. King F1, Knight takes and E4. That is White's only trump card. Hoping to distract Black's pieces. Knight back to F4. Dingleran kept pushing the pawn and H3. You cannot go further. If you play e6 then there is h2 and it is black who not only will promote first but after e7 this is already checkmate. So after h3 Ding Liren had to do something else. He came up with bishop c6, h2 and a waiting move bishop b7 that bishop is controlling the h1 square. Both players only had seconds on the clock. Black is winning but did Rajabov have the technique to bring the point home. Well he did. Very impressive how he played his end game. Very instructive as well. He pushed the g-pawn. Ding Liren just waited. Bishop c6. He cannot do anything else. And the king goes out of the way for the g-pawn. Bishop b7 again. There comes the g-pawn. A check. King h4. Back on the long diagonal. King g5. Black is going after the e-pawn, just winning a second pawn. Bishop e4 to prevent the king going to f5. But king g4, a waiting move. And now white is in Zugzwang. White is totally lost. e6 was played. Ding Liren gave up that pawn. And he could now bring his king to g2. Knight came back with check and king in the corner. But it doesn't work. Knight h3 is a very nice move with the threat of knight f2 winning a piece. All that white can hope for here is that black will fall into a stalemate trap. King g2 doesn't work because black 
just promotes and after king takes black picks up the piece king g2 knight takes e4 and you and i can win this position against ding Ren, as long as we don't stillmate him ding tried another stillmate trick he played bishop f3 check here hoping that black would automatically take the bishop but then the game is a draw because this position is still made. The white king has no legal moves but is not in check. And white has no other pieces left to make a move with. Rajabov, even though he only had a few seconds and even though the tension was incredibly high, did not fall for that. He played king f4, king g2, knight f2, protecting the promotion square. If you now play the bishop away, then... We have checkmate on the board. Ding played king f1 instead, but after king takes f3, his bishop is now just hanging and it's not a stalemate. Ding resigned. The king only has one move and will be checkmated in a few moves. King e3 is the quickest way to win. King has to go back and this is checkmate. So a good win from Rajabov with the black pieces. As Rajabov explained afterwards, Ding had offered a draw when the position was still equal. But Rajabov felt that Ding was nervous and that's why he played on and he got rewarded for his bravery. Winning the first blitz game with black, all he had to do was make a draw with white in the second and final blitz game. Ding had to win with the black pieces to steer the match into an Armageddon. This is the position after 38 g6 g5 from Ding Liren in the second blitz game. If we do a body count we see that white is a pawn up. And has a better position. B6 from Rajabov. He saw a nice trick here. Rook C6. And Rajabov played Queen E4. Leaving the B6 pawn unprotected. And Ding fell for it. He took on B6. To restore material equality. But he had missed a beautiful shot. If you have not seen it yet. You may want to look for yourself. Put the video on pause. And see if you can find a wonderful shot. A tactical combination that Rajabov played here. He played it immediately, he had prepared it, he had seen it when he played Queen e4, and he put Rook d1 to d7 on the board. What a shot! You have to take the Rook, because otherwise you lose your Queen because of the skewer. So Queen takes is forced, and then Knight f6 check with a wonderful fork, winning the Queen for a Rook. Please note, you cannot take the knight with the rook, because the rook is pinned. That's why the queen is doing such a great job on e4. King g7, knight takes d7, white has a queen for a rook, but by resigning, a game was never saved. So Ding played on, rook b5, the rook was attacked on b6, queen c4, attacking the rook again, rook d5, and knight c5, the knight was hanging on d7, and Rajabov had eyed up another trick. Rook f takes e5, takes a pawn, a dying man can eat anything. But after knight takes e6, check, another tactical shot. Ding resigned. And Rajabov had won both blitz games and had won the 2019 World Cup. What a wonderful finish. It is check. You cannot take the knight because then you lose the rook. And now white has a queen for a bishop. And if you... Don't take the knight, but play king f6 to get out of the check. Then, for example, knight takes f4, g takes f4, white picks up another pawn, and will pick up the h-pawn as well. And there's really nothing to play for here anymore for black. The white king is perfectly safe, and white's material advantage is just too large. Timur Rajabov is the winner of the World Cup 2019. Dingley Ren lost in the final for the second time in a row. And how did Rajabov feel? Well, in his interview, only minutes after completion of this game, he said that he was extremely exhausted, but he must have been very, very happy as well. But every Sunday, we analyze a viewer's game, a game played by a viewer of the Chess to Impress YouTube channel. And somebody asked me for the viewer's game's pipeline. This is the order. Today, we're going to look at Kahan's game. Next week, it will be Chess Jim's game, and then Hardik, then Dayan, Alex, Terry, Michael, and so on. So we have quite a number of games in the pipeline. If you want your game to be analyzed on the Chess to Impress channel, you can send it to me by email to classroomchess64 at gmail.com. 
And this is viewers game 108 and it is Kahan's turn. Well, his name is Ankita in his email address, but he says his name is Kahan. I'm really struggling with first names from India. Maybe somebody, one viewer can explain how Indian first names work because it happened so many times that I get an email from somebody with a certain name and then they tell me in the email that our name is different. I'm just ignorant. I know that I really like to understand how Indian first names work. Please educate me. Kahan played in the Diwali chess tournament and this is a game from round four so I think it's an over the board game. And Kahan says, I am Kahan from India. I am white in this game. It was quite an interesting game. The time control was 30 minutes without increment. So it was a rapid game. Kahan's rating in this tournament was 1300 and his opponent was Raj Patel with a rating of 1220. Let's have a look at what happens. E4 from Kahan, E5 from his opponent. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, the Italian opening, and now bishop c5, or knight f6 are the main moves, but black played a sideline with h6. Kahan castled, bishop c5, knight c3 developing the knight, d6, and also Kahan plays up the h-pawn to avoid a bishop coming to g4, which would pin the knight that may be an annoying pin. Knight f6, and here d3 is the best move to get this bishop into the game before committing the rook on f1 to a square. It's probably too early to decide where the king's rook wants to go. But Kahan commits his rook and puts it on e1. Not a bad move, but d3, I think, makes more sense. Develop that bishop first. Black castled. Now d3. Queen e7. And knight d5. It's hitting the queen. The knight was taken. E takes. Hit in the knight. Knight went to a5. And Kahan develops his bishop. Now we see a few trades. Knight takes e4. D takes. And also the bishops get traded. Here bishop f5 is a good move. Bringing that bishop into the game. Connecting the rooks, finishing development. But black played something else. He played queen f6. And we'll see in a minute what his aim was with this move. c5 from Kahan. And queen g6. That was black idea. He's now threatening bishop takes h3. Because the g-pawn cannot take back because it's pinned with the queen on g6. Kahan played queen d3. And now you cannot take on h3. If you do that, then white has an in-between move, swapping the queens, and then winning a piece on h3. Black saw that. After queen d3, he cannot take on h3. And he played bishop f5. Nice move with the tempo on the queen. Where did the queen go? All the way back to f1. And here we have a crucial moment. Two pawns are hanging. The one on c2 and the one on h3. Which one would you take here? You can put the video on pause and think about this. Taking on c2 or taking on h3. Bishop takes c2 is the best move. Winning a pawn. And white will have to show that he has compensation. But black still had his eyes on the h3 pawn to soften up white's king's position. And he took on h3. And that is a bad move. A blunder actually. If you want to look for the refutation, it's not very difficult. Again, put the video on pause. How can white refute this grab of a pawn on h3? He cannot take back. That pawn is still pinned, but there's another way to refute this bishop takes h3 move. Knight h4 is the solution. Attacking the queen and attacking the bishop. And there's no way for black to solve both problems in one go. He's going to lose a piece. Taking on c2 is the best move. Then white picks up the bishop and queen takes c5. White is better, but black at least has three pawns for his piece. Black did not see that. He played queen h5, lost his piece on h3, and took on c5. White is winning. Queen b5 from Kahan, attacking Two pawns with his move, but black can solve both problems in one go with the move b6. 
Now both the B pawn and the C pawn are protected. Rook e1, bringing the last piece into the game. Everybody wants to be at the party. f6 and queen c4. White is now going to bring all his pieces to the king's side to start a raging attack on the black king. After all, he has an extra piece that he can use for his attack. Queen f7, knight f5. And c6, trying a cheapo, why not? Maybe white will fall for it, but Kahan did not fall for it. You cannot take the pawn because your queen is unprotected. Kahan did not fall for that, he played queen g4, threatening to take on h6. A nice echo from what we saw earlier when black took on h3. The g-pawn is now pinned. So king h7 to unpin the g-pawn. And rook e to e3. White is going to bring that rook also into the attack on the king's side. C takes d5 from black. He has an impressive pawn center which could weigh up against the piece he's down if it were not for white's king side attack, which is very powerful. 23 points are attacking the black king. Rook e to g3 was played. The engine is already giving a forced checkmate here. So black will not be able to use his wonderful, strong pawn center. By the time he brings those pawns forward, he will have been checkmated already. Rook g8 was played by black. And knight takes h6. That's not really a sacrifice, but it's the quickest way to checkmate the black king. Breaking down the protection around the black king. G takes and rook takes. Also, that's not really a sacrifice. But black has to take, and now mate into rook h3, queen h5, and checkmate. A wonderful attacking game from Kahan. I really enjoyed it. Kahan says, I think it is suitable for the viewers game series. And he suggests the title, The Smart Sacrifice, or Destroying the King's Position. I myself think the key theme in this game is taking the wrong pawn. After black took on h3 instead of c2, his position went downhill. And Kahan very, very nicely finished it off. Well done, Kahan. And thank you very much for sharing this game so I could share it with the Chess to Impress community. And what about our game, Rick against the Chess to Impress viewers? I am white, you are black, and we're going to put all the moves on the board. We are on move 14. You took on d5, I took back. You played queen e7, putting a lot of pressure on my e4 pawn. I defended the pawn, and it was your move. What did you play on move 14? Let's have a look. 24 viewers submitted a move and the winner is a7, a6 with 7 votes. Very closely followed by bishop c8 to d7 with 6 votes. Knight b to d7, 4 votes. Knight f to d7, 2 votes. As well as the knight going to a7. 3 viewers wanted to sacrifice. Bishop takes h3. Queen takes d4. Even a queen sacrifice. And knight b takes d5. But those moves didn't make it. A7, A6 is the winner. So let's put that move on the board and let me tell you what one of the viewers, as you can see here on my comments page, it is VJ who says he wants to play A6 to stop Knight B5 or Bishop B5. And it is funny animator Jim TV. His game is up next week who says those moves for Y don't really do much. Bishop B5 can always be met with Bishop D7. And then we exchange, which eases our space cramp. So we might as well just let white play the knight or bishop there and then we may win a tempo with a6. Interesting view from funny animator Jim TV. He did not like a6 very much but it's the majority that counts and the move is on the board. It's my turn and on the 15th move I play the move a2 to a4. My plan is to play a5 if I can kick your knight away and I hope that my pawn on a5 will be able to keep those two pawns in check and I would control two of your pawns with one of mine. So a2 a4 is my move and it is your turn again. You can take part in this game by putting your move in the comment section underneath this video. By doing so you will also be in the raffle for a chess book. At the end of the game I will raffle a chess book which was made available by my sponsor The Best Is That, a web shop for chess books. So all you need to do is leave a comment with the 15th move for black in this position and you will be 
part of this exciting game. The position is very complex and very rich and I'm really looking forward to seeing your suggestions for the 15th move. We covered a lot of ground in this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.